Now let's finish up the head texture. So I did want to show you how you can use the mesh maps within your actual texture painting. Those mesh maps are the ones that were baked inside of Substance Painter, the curvature map, the ambient occlusion, things like that. They exist here, but not inside of any of our layers yet. But you can actually bring those in and use them to create whatever effects that you want. So in order to do that, all we have to do is bring in a fill layer. And this fill layer, as we saw earlier, we could bring a procedural or anything into things like the base color and something like that. So let's turn off our height, roughness, everything but the color. And when we choose this button, this will allow us to bring up a lot of the different procedurals and maps, and we can choose things that way as well. Now, all of our mesh maps will also be in here. And so we could start to type in, let's say, uh, let's say curvature. And you can see, here's all the curvature maps that have been baked. And you can see here, this is for the cowl. If we hover over these, this is for the claws. This one is for the skin, like the legs and the arms. And so you just want to find the one that goes with whatever map you happen to be painting on. For instance, there's the jumpsuit. So we're painting on the head. So that's going to be this one. So we'll go ahead and click on that one. Now it just adds it on the top and you can see all that's really happened is it's added white areas on the high spots and dark areas in the low spots. If I turn it off and on, you can kind of see the effect of that. So if we want to, we could use this to sort of accentuate uh, some of the details that we have here. For instance, if we turn this on and we just click this over to a multiply, you can see that's the effect that we get where it's darker. It darkens everything as a whole, but it also darkens the lower areas. We could also set this to screen. You can see that shows mostly the white. Here's overlay, which gives you the white, the dark, but then also it darkens up the middle a little bit just because the image is gray, but then we can go in here and start to dial down the intensity of it. And so that gives you maybe a little bit more darkness in some of the crevices and you can dial that up or down. You could also paint areas of it out again, but all you have to do is pipe that into the color or whatever channel you want to use it on. And that applies to the ambient occlusion or any of those maps that you want to incorporate into your actual textures. So now let's say that we want to add some sort of blue raised ridges up at the top, Well, we can just continue to add layers. And so here we can add a new layer. And let's say that here, I want to add some detail uh, up here that is sort of uh, raised blue uh, ridges. And so thinking about this, okay, we'll make it a sort of dark, a little bit desaturated blue. The height will increase a little bit. And let's say on the roughness, I'll make it a little bit rougher. Okay. And we can try that out. So let's say that we want this to happen kind of right in here. Okay. I do want it to be a little bit harder edged and a little bit higher. So I'll increase the height and then let's take the hardness up a little bit. All right. So I'll come in here and now you can see, we can add these sort of areas here. Now I want to break up the edges of those a little bit. So I'm going to actually choose a slightly different brush. And so let's choose this chalk bumpy and let's decrease the size. Let's increase the hardness. And then you can see, we can really get those rough kind of edges. And so we can come in here and start to add some of these and you can experiment with other brushes too. If you don't like that, the, uh, the chalky look, this one is a cement. So if we get small enough brush size here, you can see where you can kind of blend that back into the surface and get some nice smooth lines on the outer part of it. And the key, just as with uh, a lot of different kinds of texturing is layering. And so we can create these raised areas. Let's go ahead and I'm going to increase the height just a little bit. And just so they look a little bit more natural, we can blend them sort of back in do the same thing up here. Maybe this one's in the middle and then maybe you've got some larger areas in the back. And so just kind of whatever pattern you want to create, I think something like that looks kind of good. Bringing that maybe a little bit, a little bit more into the forehead and maybe a little bit more on, on the side here as well. 
And then you're just sort of layering things on. So we could say, okay, now I want there to be, I want to go back over this and I want to add maybe some lighter or darker spots. So we can get our dots here. We got these blue dots, make it a little bit smaller. And let's take the height down and let's take the flow and remove the pins contribution. So it's going to be dark no matter what. And then we can dial that in manually. And then we can add some spots across the whole thing. Kind of blends things together. And maybe they're not just up there, but maybe they're in some of these rougher areas as well. So you could try something like that. Maybe get a few of them down here. And just as with anything, if you don't like any of these spots, let's say we don't like the ones up here, I got my eraser. I can just come back in on that layer, get rid of the ones I don't want. Substance Painter is so amazing at being flexible and letting you do a lot of different things, try a lot of different things. If it doesn't work, you can always go back and get rid of those. And it's, it's just a very flexible way to work. Okay. We also might want to do some blue bits along the, these ridges here. And for that, I'll get a hard brush with a smaller size. Okay. And I just want to kind of come in and make some rough. And let's actually put this on a new layer so that we can adjust this separately. And I'll just kind of follow along with the shape roughly and just kind of go along in the center of those areas. You can kind of see the, the vague outline of them. And so I'm just kind of following along with that outline and just kind of work my way towards the back. Kind of like that. Okay. So you could do something like that. And then if it was too much, you could always kind of take it down a little bit. If you wanted to break up the color, we could go back and get our kind of like our dirt one of our dirt spots brushes maybe, but then instead of messing with the color or with messing with the height at all, we could not do anything with the height and just mess with the color. So we could get kind of a little bit of a lighter color, smaller size, and we can break up the colors a little bit. Take this size down and just break up the colors on top of there. See how that kind of breaks things up. Now, if you did want to put some height in there, that might help to break up the, the fact that the height is just one constant. So let's make the height just a bit taller. And then you can see, you can create these sort of bumps that are a little bit lighter in the middle. So maybe something like that, but it's kind of up to you. Just create some kind of cool design up at the top and try to separate them into different layers. And so that way you can go in and make adjustments and change things. You don't like it, just erase it or get rid of the layer. Do a lot of different variations and try new things. We could also add, just like we have these with that, that bone there. If we go to our smart materials and let's add our bone stylized to the very top. Let's go ahead and create a black mask. And then we could come back in here if we wanted to and start to work some of these other bits into that sort of bony color or bony material that kind of goes with the rest of it. Okay. And just like with any of the other layers, you know, we're painting on a mask right here. But you could add filters to a mask too. We could add a blur to our mask instead of to our actual layer. That blurs out the effect of the mask. We could add those filters uh, to layers, but also to masks as well. Let's get it to a point that is, uh, I don't know, something like that. And then in the next clip, we will start to uh, texture the necklace. The necklace, we didn't model any detail on, so we can kind of build that up from scratch. So we will do that next.